everyone, hoi allemaal. So today is going to be a random assortment of planned jobs consisting mainly of adding more plants to the garden. The second of the year, first was the hellebores that I needed that needed planting, of course, because they are hellebores and they are always <laughs> very root bound in their pots. Um, but also, I could only plant them after I finished doing the plant tech organizing, which you should have seen two videos ago, if I'm getting my organization right today. But yeah, let me show you the plants and we'll go from there. So this is one of the plants that I bought that I don't think we'll get planted today because it was very well you know when they say or maybe you don't but I learned it from Caleb from Wise Guide and I think it's a excellent tip so I'm going to share it again but sometimes um, when plants get well come to you eh, potted up already then well there's a lot of soil packed on top of plants and usually some type of mulch added anyhow with this magnolia it was the case that it was well had soil basically all the way up to here but the first roots the real roots because there were a lot of roots just spiraling around spiraling around spiraling Spiraling, spiraling, that's the word, spiraling, spi no, never mind. Going around of the base because they probably just added soil on top of it and on top of it. And so roots grow up then because they want to go into soil. But it was all the way up here, so a lot of roots. But the first real, real, real roots are at this level. So we dug it out, added in some fertilizer and we're... Or my idea at least is just to leave it maybe summer or maybe end of summer into fall. Because this is way too much soil. And I would say always check, especially shrubs and um, trees, check where the first real roots come out of the base of the tree. Or in this case, a magnolia. That it's going to be a tree, but it's still a shrub. And I also bought this Ooh. Hamamelis Intermedia Aphrodite, which I've always wanted. And I was like, yeah, now's the time. It's done flowering, but... It will flower again. I also got a variety of other plants. So two pulmonarias and these type of two type of pulmonarias. This is a tiarella, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a tiarella, a evergreen shrub thingy that I thought was really cute. And this is also... A collection of plants I got some shrubs some the these are all what I consider ground cover because they stay around the 20 these are 25 centimeters but to me that's still ground cover those are also ground cover shrubs tiarella this is a physocarpus this is a Lysteria, there's the tag, aim for the tag. We also have some loose plants over here. And the maples are going. But I'm not sure if we're going to get the planting because the wind is picking up like a lot. Maybe this was a false start to the day. But some more 
ground covers and yeah so a big collection to choose from but I think we need to focus on the big ones so work our way from biggest shrub to small in this case ground cover <laughs> let's see what we can get done today but let's ooh, some bee just graze my ear or something but these this tiarella and the other one I want to go in that area because I want to make sure it's filled out and since that is well I don't want to say a shade border but eh, sort of a shade border more well sometimes it's also full sun but yeah it could use a little extra of course there's one already in here but it's a smallie very much covered up by daffodil foliage but it's there and it's putting on its own flowers the cutie but yeah let's see maybe one could live here there because that's a spot that hellebore will probably fill in that was one of the ones from the plant tech video so one hellebore made it up here and we have another tiarella and nope let's aim correctly or else no one will know what I'm talking about but there were a couple of Eucharas in here but they died apparently that one is trying to be alive but I think the other one can go here because there's a dead one and this is a live one so we can start here so when planting I always use well, in this case just a small small shovel we of course need a plant I have my fertilizers here so this is the lava grid to help aerate the clay soil and this is some um, fertilizer that's technically for the lawn but well the lawn already got its dough so we just I'm just go going to use it up in the garden which is fine because all fertilizer is basically the same in my opinion at least I also got some new gloves which has a little bit of an arm sleeve and yeah we'll see how these work but I already like them they're a little bit too loose I think but yeah the other ones were broken at, uh, broken at the tip of the finger so <laughs> every time I took them off I had a lot of dirt under my fingernails so not very practical and these davidales these are da -da -da -da, bridal crown they smell amazing so yeah that's just whoop, dig a hole get the plant in well dig a hole fertilize plant in and on to the next one Well, I'm done and the, ra and the rain is starting, so good timing, I would say. But I got these two Tiarellas planted. Let me show you the tags. Ooh. 
Yeah. So this is a Tiarella pink skyrocket. And it gets to about 20 to 30 centimeters tall. Flowers in, what is this? March through June. No, April through June. Dyslexia here, so. Yeah, so. Looks very pretty. And this Tiarella is called Sugar and Spice. So that's this one. And I love the pointy leaves and the color, well, the, yeah, the discoloration instead of a heuchera next to it, which has also, it's also beautiful. But let's not, not make mistakes about that. But it's different. Yeah, so a little bit of variation in this border is good. And hopefully it will spread out, become bigger. And this one gets taller to be about 40 centimeters. So maybe I should have switched them, but well, this is a messy border. But looking at it, I think I could have added one more, one more in here. But yeah, well maybe I have another plant <clears throat> in my collection that could be added over there. I don't think so because everything else is big, like really big. Ooh, let's see. Oh. Hmm. This one could technically do. Let's see. And the rain has also stopped apparently, but it's another type of foliage, so yeah, it could definitely work. But then I would also want another one just to repeat it. Maybe one in here. And the rain is picking up. And maybe one right around there. And this corner, yeah, it's a difficult corner. I've not had, well, some success, but not a lot. I'm just hoping that everything in here just survives. But the rain is picking up. I'm going to sign off and we will pick this up again another time. So this is the mock-up border we made with all of the plants that we have in the sense that they're going to get planted on the other side of the house. Some of the plants were not used because they're staying on this side of the house. But it was just to give us some inspiration and see hey, what we can do with these plants. And because of this mock-up, we also decided that one of the Japanese maples was also going to get planted on the other side. Initially, we had planned on putting it on this side of the house, but looking at it and talking about it, we decided, hey, it could also be a good idea to put it on the other side, just to have some variation. But it was just fun to do and to see, get some inspiration and... That maple is just looking good. <laughs> but yeah. I 
tried not to do it very strictly in a sense of uh, going from small small at the front, large at the back, but just a mixture. Because this border, hey, the way it's sitting, you could see from a lot of angles, not just the front, uh, which you could see in the time lapses. But yeah, it looks good. The first load of plants going to the garden from that whole bunch. Is this whoop, this is the first one a hamamelish? Focus, please. Hamamelis Aphrodite, which can grow to about four meters high. So, big guy. So, we're <clears throat> sorry. We are only planting the shrubs and the big perennials. And <gasps> it's looking so good. And this one is going here because this is a Osmanthus, am I correct? Osmanthus burkwoodi, but its companion is next to it and it died, but it's alive because, but. It's so tiny. I just wanted to give it a big brother to say, hey, you can do this. And look at these tulips. Easily distracted, but pretty. No idea what these are, but they're pretty. And there's a bee buzzing around in here somewhere. I can hear it. Oh, never mind. It's a waspy. But you can't see it. There, waspy. Big waspy butt. Yeah, but we got another load to disperse around the garden. Well, dotted throughout the garden, there are a lot of plants that need planting. Here is one, a no idea what this is in English, but oh, there's the tag Listeria. Ly Lysisteria. Little lanterns. This one stays smaller, about 75 centimeters. But I was mostly thinking about the bright yellow foliage as a contrast to. Well, a lot of green in here. The boyfriend is already uh, busy planting away that pot. And here we have another pot that's a ground cover, evergreen. 
uh, juniper communis gold shot so also a little bit of the gold but i thought it would cover it below the butterfly bush since this one gets big but its name is flower power so we'll give it that so there's one we have a maple here that here a beautiful red one I do not know the name because I removed the tags a long time ago but I will put it up on the screen but one it needed to get rehomed second we wanted to put it on the other side of the uh, of the house where we're going to make garden uh, where the wisterias uh, uh, are that's a plan for next year so this year we are focusing on the garden on this side and just filling them up and making sure all ground is covered but that maple will be a good start for here and a good contrast with all the well just a good contrast we have another evergreen over here we have a second one that one has a tag i see so don't know what that is we have a plant right there a something something physocarpus i believe yes physocarpus oh raspberry lemon the tag says trust me you probably can't read it but also to get some contrast in here the, we also uncovered the dahlia beds that are already starting to grow we've had some rain we're going to get some rain so I'm also noticing that definitely not all of them survived like here should be one but no no game but this one is alive I have a big gap of nothingness in here until we get to there and yeah another magnolia sensation that we have over here yeah and a lot of and more plants dotted here and over there but yeah let's go help the boyfriend before he gets mad at me for just doing nothing shall we showed you this on another plant but uh, the same goes for this plant it was buried well above this wooden stick to hold the pot intact um, so it would like well this new 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 branch oh words are difficult this new branch was buried um, but we gained about, oh, what's this, three to four centimeters of plant just by exposing some extra. Because here, um, I don't know if you can see that, but let me help. This is where the root flare starts, as in this is the base of the plant. So the base of the plant needs to be exposed. And not buried in the soil so people expose your root flare of your plants please check them every time you buy well especially trees shrubs and maybe some perennials that are more woody than others but just check them 
because it would be a waste if you just lost them just because they were buried too deep when you bought them. Plant number one. Plant number two. And... Oh. Plant number three. Plant number four. And number five, number six, well, tree number one, plant number six. Here we have number seven, a lovely grass with some variegation. Number eight, a repeat. Number nine, number ten, <laughs> eleven, twelve, and well, thirteen, and number. 14 is there being planted a where is it there a butlaya getting manhandled into the hole Number 15. And number 16. And this is the original one. 17. And then, of course, 18. So, 18 new plants in the ground, a good way to start, and they're going to get a lot of rain in the coming week, so it was also good timing, but now we have like, I'm looking at it, <laughs> maybe th triple the amount of plants that are still going to need to be planted, but they are smaller. I give myself that they are smaller in the sense that they are P9 pots, so 9 centimeters in diameter. So that means just digging a lot of holes, but that can be done also in the same amount of time. But anyways, a good day in the garden. I hope you also get to do something garden related today. Thank you for watching. Bye everyone. Dag allemaal.